Hey everybody. Hi everyone. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, Magandang umaga. Morning everybody. Magandang umaga. Welcome to the weekend habit. This is episode 9 and we're going to be talking about saving time and organizing. Yay. Uh, yeah. So I just realized that we've been uh, doing this for two months now. Mm -hmm. uh, time flies so fast in in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. So for those people who are joining us today, thank you. And um, if you're watching on Periscope, uh, we are actually going to be live on Twitter as well and also on YouTube. So thank you so much. Uh, I've got my uh, Twitter chat up already and I've got my first question also. But let me share my screen. Give me one second. Bago ang lahat, kumusta kayo? Uh, I'm here with uh, my three co-hosts every week, uh, Alfonso, Lisa, and Riza. So go ahead, guys, and introduce yourselves. Sige, go. <laughs> Nagkahiyaan pa. <laughs> <laughs> parang yung huling, ano eh, parang yung huling puto sa ano. Happy you go ahead. Hi, good morning everyone. It's me again, Alfonso, or at Teacher Forest on Twitter. Two months has been, these past two months have really been amazing. The show is going so well and I love that we're bringing in more and more people along for this ride. So can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next few days, weeks, and years even. Totally agree with that. Sobra. Mm -hmm. That's right. I totally agree Too with much. that. Ayan. Oh, Riza. Kamusta ka naman, Riza, today? Okay. So uh, I tried to calm myself this week. It's really, was really challenging with regards to reminding students about their submission and everything and mm -hmm. also you know trying to engage parents in supporting the learning process of their kids some parents mm -hmm. would really you know see it on the bright side other parents would you know go to the other side of the fence and would you know revert back to why are you reminding me things like that but no life's like that but mm -hmm. things must go on and you just go. So I'm happy that I have the weekend habit to, you know, look forward to and regain my confidence, everything. So, and it's the ninth. So that means next, next week, next weekend, it's going to be the 10th. How time flies. Yes. That's true. <laughs> That's true. We should all start singing Jose Marie chant right now. I don't like. <laughs> Oh my god, anybody who's watching, anybody who's watching right now who's not Filipino, <laughs> if you're not Filipino, you won't be able to get it. But yeah, Jose <laughs> Marichan is once again trending. Mm -hmm. um, and hey, Lisa, how are you? Go ahead, Lisa. I'm good. Um, we're not getting. We're not yet in school, but we'll be starting on Sunday because um, it's a predominantly Muslim country. So it's a Sunday, Thursday week mm -hmm. for me. So I'll be, uh, I'll be in meetings. And then I also have my CISA presentation to work on. Because oh. so, I'm a CISA ambassador in our school. So Yay. I'll be doing Yay. that on the 7th, I think. So mm -hmm. I'm preparing for that. That's it. Yeah, I uh, that's that's really great. I mean, for those people who don't know, uh, Riza and Lisa are both uh, CISA ambassadors, and from my side, me and Laffy are both Google certified um, uh, trainers. So yes, yeah, so you've got a whole bunch of people here who can help you out when it comes to <laughs> some ed tech stuff. And we're, I'd really like to learn more about the people who are also joining us every week because they also have lots of really good recommendations that we can try mm -hmm. let me uh yeah. just share my screen. that is true uh, let me just share my screen over here uh this is our episode nine oh, by the way i just want to give a quick shout out i found out yesterday that uh, one of our um, most popular 
YouTubers in the Philippines yeah, past. Yeah, really I heard. Yes, yes I know. Yes. About I was surprised. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Very, so, very young. So young. Yeah. He was a guilty well, pleasure was during this whole uh, during this whole quarantine period. My wife That's and I would enjoy watching and just laughing guiltily <laughs> at his videos mm-hmm. because he was because Lloyd was, is it, Lloyd's really funny if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, really but I think uh, more than funny, he's a very genuine person. Like uh, yes, I met him yes. before. Like oh, when, really? uh, yeah, so when you when YouTube still wasn't like um, when YouTube rock stars and there weren't many uh, really popular YouTubers in the Philippines yet, he was one of the very first who actually got to a hundred thousand subscribers. Oh. So uh, so there was the first YouTube Happy Hour in the Philippines at that time, and I got invited. So it was a really small group at that time, very small place. I know that it's now being um, the YouTube Happy Hour. Um, what they call this, the events are now being done in bigger and bigger places because there are more and more YouTubers that are coming. But at that time, it was still a very small place and we had to do it at Baba Gump in Makati. You know, the back, you know, the back room of Baba Gump oh, wow. can be used for, it's really small. It's a very okay, intimate bro. event. So, right, yeah. Uh, Ir- Irwan was there um, mm-hmm. and some other, you know, YouTubers here in the Philippines who are, quite uh, getting more and more popularity and of course lloyd was there and he's also the host of that uh, event and he, i found him to be very humble though really really humble down to earth and and i think he kept that uh, he kept that alive he could, uh, during the whole time from that time to now and he's got 5.29 million subscribers yeah so even now when you see his videos even the most recent ones he kept that humility and that I think that's going to be really missed. So yeah, rest in power. Yep. Um, so there. Um, now I've got my first question here. Uh, introduce yourself, your school and location, and what are your plans this weekend? Um, so again, I'm Mary Montano. I am the founder of GTech Guru and the co-founder of Artstock PH. And I'm um, I'm going to be delivering paintings this weekend, <laughs> so by tomorrow I'm gonna go on a joyride because we've got some uh, paintings that need to be delivered to clients, and I wanted to do it personally because I actually haven't met a lot of our artists, and I want to meet meet our painters and our artists personally. I also want to meet the clients, so I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna do like an eight-hour joyride, I think. <laughs> so wow. we're just gonna be out <laughs> the whole day. Wow. Yeah. I, I Within Manila. So, no, no, there's Laguna. So there's Laguna. There's um I have to go to Kalookan. So parang end to end. And yes. um North Pisa. So then, 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's okay. Pretty I'm far. Like, <laughs> I know. Extremes. Yeah, me. those are extremes. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, that's my plan. How about you guys? What are your plans this weekend? Well, I just tweeted mine. Um, MA classes at the University of the People have just started. So as you all know, I got the scholarship for the IB Masters in Education. Wow. So yeah. yeah. So right now, I'm, I'm thinking, should I have applied for that scholarship? Because now I'm not so sure if I can handle the workload. But it's just day three, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so just taking it one one day at a time. <laughs> yes. That's true. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how yep. you do it. Yep. You can't really... Um, step. Don't try to... Uh, you try to uh, do so many things all at the same time. Normally what happens is you get so overwhelmed. Yeah. And I, I, I really realized this yesterday when I did my... Uh, when I did my training, it was mm-hmm. um, I got really overwhelmed. Like if you mm-hmm. do an eight-hour training on on Google, mm-hmm. there's just so many things, and they don't know where to begin. And you know, I keep telling them one at a time. Focus on your learning objective, mm-hmm. and then think about what you want to do. So just one at a time. All right. How about you, Lisa? What are your plans this weekend? Uh definitely. It's just. Um having an overview of my schedule for next week as we start um, teacher's orientation virtually. 
and then as well as at the same time um we're also um arranging our stuff to fly out oh. uh, so we will be flying out in two weeks hopefully oh. so definitely it uh, it's it those are happening at the same time so that uh, we need to prepare for that so oh, yeah that's, that, that's uh, those are my plans yeah Mm -hmm. uh, but What's the time difference between just two hours. Okay, two hours. just two hours. But definitely, so I'll be like super early. Ahead. You are. Yes, we are two hours ahead. Oh. We're always ahead, except with Australia. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. So today, so, I'm yeah. you again. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a two-hour difference, but that means my weekend habit will be super early when I fly oh. back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's 7 30 there. Yeah. Service 7 Still in my coffee morning. and my pajamas. Yes. <laughs> you can't sleep. I'll be okay, like, good morning. morning. If you're I'll be like, good morning, we can have it. I just woke up like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's like um, seesaw. Yeah. Um, How about your Rita? I don't know. Right? Oh, What's your plan this yeah. weekend? This weekend, I'm just gonna go go back to guard checking videos and giving feedback. So I want to give my eyes a rest. <laughs> so I'm going to tend to the tomatoes, to the avocados, and Yay. the plantita. <laughs> Hashtag plantita. Yes. Or yeah. I, I heard this from my wa my wife yesterday. Plant. P L A U N T plant. Oh, plenty. 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 And plonko. Plonko. That's awesome. As Pinoy, okay, like, so I like to, I don't know, coin words. Like, like to yep. plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah coin words. That's right. So. All right, now I've got my first question up for this week. So everybody, we are talking about saving time and organizing. So we were we will either talk about the challenges, the techniques that we use to save time and organize, as well as many you know applications that you can use to just um, cut down on those repetitive tasks that take up so much of your time. Mm -hmm. So my first question is up, and this is my first question. What are the things that take up the most of your time when teaching online? So, Student, um, you are on mute. <laughs> oh, you are on mute. <laughs> Unmute yourself. <laughs> you just have a card that says. <laughs> or I just I just put it in my copy and paste on my computer clipboard and then just paste it. You are on mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a. That's one, but what I'm saying more is um, for me, what takes up the most uh, time for me is prep. I realized it this week because this week is the first time I've done face-to-face -face training in a long time. So the last time I did face-to-face -face training was like February, I think. So it's been months and I've, I've forgotten the feeling of actually being in the classroom. So I was in the classroom for, for the last two days and um it was a totally <laughs> i don't know I don't like, a different experience <laughs> but more than that though i realized that the prep time takes mm -hmm. uh shorter for me the prep time for me for face-to-face -face training is shorter than online training like yeah. when i have to do online training there's so much prep that needs to be done before as well as after because you normally shorten the time when you teach online and so there's so much support that has to happen at least for me because i teach teachers there's a lot of support that happens post training so there, you still have to like put up chat groups you have to put up like stuff like that you need to be able mm -hmm. to put up a support channel and those are things that yes you do it on face to face but asking questions when you're in the classroom is a lot easier for the students to do. That's what I noticed. And it's harder to solicit those questions when you're online. Yeah. Online, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are my challenges. Like the preparation time is just a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess, Agreed. yeah. 
mm-hmm. anybody else with their with with their own shares? <laughs> no, I I agree with Mary. I agree with Mary. The prepping for virtual learning is mm-hmm. a lot, especially if you are not well versed with the tools that you're supposed to use. So yes. like we have had teachers last last spring um mm-hmm. using their videos for the first time or mm-hmm. iMovie for the first time. So that really That's takes good. up time of your time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's those little things that pile up. And mm-hmm. of course then you have your chores. And then I'm a mommy, so I need to mm-hmm. that also yes. takes up my time. So, you know, that's that's pretty hard. So it's that's those true. little things that they compound and then it's turns into a big thing. So yeah. That's that's uh that's what takes end, up most of my overwhelmed. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is it's quite overwhelming. Yeah. Yes. So for hmm. me, what about you, Risa? The, it's really giving feedback because mm-hmm. during sync time, I can't really uh, check the way they execute the movements because you know if you have thirty-five students during sync class, it's really challenging to you know check how they perform an an exercise movement that follows a correct form to avoid injury. So what I would always tell them is. Uh, let's submit a video with this uh, movement and then I'm going to give feedback. So I got overwhelmed giving feedback uh, through videos. So I opted to use the rubric in Flipgrid so mm-hmm. that I would I would just tell my students, okay, read the rubric Hi. and then when, once <laughs> I email the feedback to you, you'll see how where you are on that rubric that uh, we've set like these are the competencies check where you are and if it's not yet there on the highest standard or competency then you have to redo or resubmit your video so uh to see improvement so things like that but uh this week i realized they would always ask me miss what do you mean i still need to resubmit i already submitted then i would explain again you know formative activities that means i would still need to check how you're doing how you're progressing it's not graded performance task is different from your formative so i think you know assessing kids it's really important that we uh or reorient them again on these vocabularies because most of my fifth graders they thought that when they submitted the formative one that will be the graded video already so no i can't do that i can't grade you when it's your first time to perform it or execute it and then you know when i didn't give any feedback so that took up most of my time and emailing parents one at a time so i was talking to mary about it to create a group for parents so that i could just remind using a group email. So our school is uh, working on that already. I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. So that's it for me, the feedbacking that really eats up my time. Yeah, you're grading so many students. Like you told us before that you're grading 270 students. That's a lot of students to grade. So yeah. And I think that for the teachers who are going to be watching this, um, you're going to be facing the same challenges. Like I know that um, the people who are preparing right now, you won't know until you're actually in there. You won't know that um, what the challenges are going to be until you actually start uh, teaching. Yes, and until um, you're there. Until you're right there. I agree. I agree about that. So. That's true. I mean, let's um, let's try to take a look at those challenges and see what um, what techniques do you actually recommend? Because that's my second question. What techniques um, actually help you manage your time? Mm-hmm. Oh, so for me, I mm-hmm. like posting in Google Classroom. So our learning management system is Google Classroom. So I always schedule posts. Yeah. Like if I have sync class next week, uh, Friday, that's my posting day. So I schedule everything, all the task activities, videos for the kids. 
so that when we meet on our sync class, it's already there. They wouldn't ask me, Miss, where is like this? Miss, where is like that? So, mm -hmm. but then again, you know, it's really overwhelming for them as well because if your kids have 13 subjects, we didn't factor that in when we planned over, over for mm -hmm. the ODL that uh, for each subject who would give three activities for a sync, that would mean 10 times 3, so 30. So sometimes they would have 10 homeworks to answer in a day. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Yikes. So yesterday I asked them, I asked my homeroom class since I'm, I'm an advisor. So how many homeworks do you answer in a day? So some said uh, 6, some said 10. So I, I then I thought, ah, that's a lot. That's why mm -hmm. they would opt to submit for the core subjects and leave the special subjects uh, for the other days or until it's a uh, deadline or due date already. And then I would keep on reminding and then they would say, Miss, I got a lot of emails reminding me to submit this and that. So uh, I realized I have to limit the activity as well. So instead of giving two for practice and for the main output, I just have the main output and do all the practice in sync time so that's mm -hmm. what i've realized so for the teachers who are teaching and planning don't give too much async activities because chances are your kids will get will be overwhelmed and then you know even if we plan it the way that we're seeing it but the kids coping skills we have to teach them as well yep mm -hmm. yeah um yeah right now mm -hmm. Have a lot That's of students. True. We also have a lot of students who are like um, having problems submitting work on time. Um, so we've really devised a system wherein we just make sure that we have like, um, parang like mga online courses where all of the learning material, all of the resources have already been uploaded. Links to the dis links to um, articles are there, so students can just quickly revert to it. And then from time to time. We just really um, give out homework when it's needed because right now um, we don't want to overwork them, especially when they have a lot of pressing things to do. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, what helps me manage my time is post-its. I bought a lot of post-its um, uh, on Lazada and those have really helped me. I've like made up a system wherein the different colors are telling yes. you which is the most pressing one to address <laughs> um what do i need to focus so it's a good visual cue for letting me know whoops um my blue post-its are getting too much i think i need to focus on that area <laughs> <laughs> i still have this mm. pizza i can see that uh, hey. <laughs> i can see that pizza is here yeah uh-huh is back yeah yeah so Chris was saying yes. that the Pomodoro, uh, the Pomodoro method, one of the things that, that has helped him uh, turn email mm -hmm. off for a while. And mm -hmm. you are, I, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, you thought um, me when we were. We I were like that you're last twenty last Christmas. Remember, <laughs> you shared that to me, the Pomodoro. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. I use it because I, yeah, I think I was the one who shared it to Chris also. <laughs> <laughs> That's I true. I mean, that I really love the Pomodoro. Yeah. It gained a lot of traction a few years ago, right? That's why um, a lot of Filipinos are, yeah. us are using the Pomodoro method, especially in the um, yeah. tutorial classes. For me, uh, I, what, what really helps me is uh, have to manage your time. You have to have a framework. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't start working unless you have it planned. And that's what mm -hmm. I like about the Pomodoro method is because you don't really, some people do the Pomodoro method and think, okay, I have my 25 minute block and my five minute break. Uh, mm -hmm. the, this, okay, the, secret to the, the secret to the Pomodoro method is not doing the whole 25 minute block and five minute break. It's the planning mm -hmm. before you actually do it. So mm -hmm. before you even do your Pomodoro method, have the the framework in mind that these are the things that you would like to accomplish for the day and uh you break 
the the 25 minute blocks are just going to break it down and i think if you have that framework in place for most of your tasks um you really will be able to save time and not spend way too much time um doing things uh, there are, and also like um you also have the 80 20 rule like um i, I use the 80 20 rule when it comes to productivity like only 80 percent of the stuff that you're doing or maybe 20 only 20 percent of the stuff that you're doing are really going to yield 80 percent mm -hmm. so even for me since uh, since i'm running a business 20 percent of the activities uh, are yielding 80 percent of revenue so I need to make sure that I know what those 20% are. And if I can extend it to a little bit more than that, I focus a lot on, on those things. On Google Classroom, for the teachers who are watching, uh, before you even begin your class or even begin doing your announcements, assignments, etc., uh, the first one is make sure that you hide your notifications that you don't need because you're yes. going to be overwhelmed with your email. Mm -hmm. So that, the, that's the first thing you need to do. Go to your settings. And do not have any notifications for your email that um, that you don't need, or else you're gonna get overwhelmed. The second one is have the topics in place before you even start putting in your assignments. So if yes. you're going to be breaking it down into weeks or into topics in your modules, uh, module one, two, three, put those topics in first, so that um, when you start doing your your uh, Google Classroom assignments, it's not going to be w too overwhelming for you and magulo na siya. And it becomes a lot more organized that way also, di ba? Uh, right. Those are kind of, well, again, framework. So have a framework for things. And if you have that framework, start to break it down. And That's I think true. that if you can spend just a little bit of time making that framework, the rest is going to be a lot you know, easier for you. You only have to do it one time though, and then everything else follows. So it's like it your, uh, diba? it's like your your Google Forms when you want to do auto graded Google Forms. You have yes. to spend time doing the answer key, doing the the yes. feedback for correct and incorrect answers. But right. at the end of the day, you assign it, and it gets auto graded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't have That's to do much right. afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so. Right. It seems you spend time to save time, something like that. Um, right. That's my, no, and my I, you know, and I agree. It's the same with the using tech. Mm -hmm. So the more mm -hmm. you use it, the more you get used to it. You really have to invest your time initially. Yes. yes. And I, I, I truly believe that that if you want it to be as fast as the way I do it. Then mm -hmm. invest your time in learning the tool. Mm -hmm. So then. Yes. And then yeah. it gets easier and easier. So I think it's I quite similar to how we do things in the classroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. And also when, when I when it comes to time, like learn how to say no to things. Oh, uh, you yeah. don't have to say yes, yes. to everything. <laughs> <laughs> don't say yes, yes to everything. Like learn how to say no because uh time is so precious that we are we're all given the same amount of time. That's the only thing that's equal in this world. So the way that you manage it is really, really important. Like know where you're actually putting time on the most important things. And if they're not, uh, if they're just gonna hog your attention and your time, and you find yourself doing something by rote that is just um, <laughs> gonna, at the end of the day, you will look at the the time and you will look at the sky and it's already evening and you don't know <laughs> where the time went where the time went <laughs> right yeah <laughs> the that time. is true. Gotta learn true. yeah learn to say no yeah. <laughs> yes. actually yeah. pilar is here know yeah. when to take breaks that yeah. is also true you know hi pilar, Productive. Hi, pilar. so he, she said like know when to take breaks which is true because it's also important that um, productivity is not all about doing the work. Mm -hmm. uh, productivity is also about taking that break. That would yes. make you be more productive, right? Mm -hmm. um, Agree. You, oh, my, my goodness, Pen Pen, Pen Pen is here. Yes, hi, Pen. Hi, Pen. Hi, Pen. Welcome. Hi, Pen. So, so Pen Pen is here. Uh, she said, listing down of the Google Classroom, the one that you said. So yeah. I missed out uh, setting my private comments for my students. So I missed 
a lot yes. last August. So I realized that I can set it. So for teachers who's using Google Classroom, just set the notifications for private comments of your students and the rest, turn it off. Because the mm -hmm. private comments are really helpful when your students are clarifying something or you're giving feedback. So mm -hmm. that's yes. it. Because most of them, when we assign assignments or when I assign assignments, they would add a private comment. But then my notifications was set into my iPad. So I was not able to really check it because once I click mm -hmm. the notifications, it doesn't lead me to the private comment. But if it's in the email, I could actually click on it and then reply right away mm -hmm. and label it on, on, yeah. on what grade level or what topic is that. So it's easier when you tag the tag it. That's, so that's true. It for me. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Totally agree with that. Uh, that's why I keep telling people that when you're setting your Google Classroom up, um, I know that it, you would want to like do your announcements right away, but take a little bit of time to click on the gear icon and click on your settings and set those settings up because it can get really noisy. Like if you don't set the settings, for example, if you allow your students to post and comment on your stream in Google Classroom, it can get really noisy. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> I mean, it's like the equivalent of having a noisy classroom. I think, but I think yes. also the students should be taught how to set their settings as a student because yesterday I realized my kids would all say, Miss, I got 400 emails. So oh. I told them, go to the settings and check to just be notified when it's the due date of your assignment and not with the postings in the stream because I think they get emails for all the posts every single teachers. thing so if teachers would post reminders they still get get that from their email so i think we missed that part actually during the yeah. orientation you know teaching students mm -hmm. how to set their settings so that their Setting. emails would just get the most important one so when i sent feedback through flipgrid they would ask me mm -hmm. miss i did not get the feedback and then i'd say but i sent the feedback last like this and then i would screenshot the time because flipgrid is so good it's dated and it's time mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i would copy the link here's the link of my feedback but you know it adds up to the work of the teacher if you would still copy the link when it's right there in their email right um already there when yeah when it's already there that's that's what i meant uh -oh. So I it's really important that you set your notifications. Yeah. <laughs> notifications are like starting that. October 5. Ask yeah. now and you know check or make a checklist of the settings that your students needs to uncheck and check so that they are helped as well. That's true. I mean, I see this um uh Pilar is also saying that that yes. only resubmissions and comments are notified uh i am that's really now my first thing uh for google classroom i didn't use to teach that but now that's the first thing that i teach so i tell mm -hmm. them you know look guys you don't want to get flooded <laughs> by yeah. so many of email notifications most especially if you're already getting notifications from your classroom app what if mm -hmm. you're already getting notifications on your phone from your classroom app that's like redundant by the way hello again to uh pen pen who yes. is here and she's actually watching on Periscope. Thank you for watching us. I've got my, uh, excuse me, I've got my for, uh, third question right here. Uh, let me just, yes. what Google apps? Drive, uh, Google Calendar. <laughs> Google Drive for yeah, me what and Google Calendar. Google Keep Drive. and Google, Google Calendar for me. Google yes. Keep and Google. Yeah. Yeah. I love Google Calendar's um, check check the common time that you can meet up with a teacher i would always oh, tell right. yeah i would always tell my teachers put your schedules in your google calendar so that i don't have to bug you about finding a common the, time yes yeah right. because when the, it's the best time to meet yeah you, right? when it's the best time to meet because if you put it there and then you also like put in your lunch breaks and all of that when i ask for a meet or when i call for a meeting i could just simply look oh okay um everybody's common time is on this day then it's so easy to meet and to uh, to talk and you don't have to bother them like can you check your 
um, schedule, schedule, are you free, or everything. It just, you know, makes the work so much easier. Oh, I'm going mm -hmm. to take note of that, Rafi. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Our practice in school um, is still, are you free at this time? Are you free at this time? Yeah. 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 Anybody who's on G Suite right now, you really have to get take the time to just put in the events in your calendar because there is a find a time feature mm -hmm. in Google Calendar when you create an event. So creating an event, it will find the best time, the earliest best time where everybody's actually free. So you don't even have to think about that. You just have to click on the find the time and it will find the time for you. The yeah. other, um, uh, uh, in Google Calendar at least, try to use appointment slots. So mm -hmm. if you have um, yes. available slots and you would mm -hmm. like to do say a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session with your students and they would like to do like a one-on-one -on -one review, you can put in appointment slots in your Google Calendar. So that is another feature when you create an event, look for the word appointment slots and you can create an appointment slot. So what, what does that do? What it does is it opens it up to the students. They will look at your calendar and they can grab the time that is available to them as well. They would book that time for you. So it's like a booking app. So it creates kind of a button in it Google is. Calendar. They click on it and then they grab that time. So they That's can nice. now say, okay, this is my one-on-one -on -one review with mm -hmm. teacher. Yeah. Not enough first come first serve. I've used it last button. spring. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Yes. It's good. It's really, yeah. Plus, I love it when you integrate also. I I haven't I used like the appointment slots, but then I prefer to use Calendly. I know that it's a it's not yeah. a free app, but mm -hmm. I like how Calendly can already organize like appointment slots based on the events in my schedule on my schedule. So it's that's also good. great. Especially if you have tutorials. <laughs> uh oh, that's right. I agree with you yes. on that. Like, um, uh, here Pilar was saying that before I met Keep, I used Evernote, but it's costly, and the free version is kind yes. of limited. I used to be an Evernote fan as well, but when I moved to Chromebook, uh, I really like Evernote on a Windows machine. But when I started using a Chromebook, I realized, hey, if this is just gonna be a, an online app anyway, Google Keep can, can do things really well. So Google Keep for me is uh, both used for personal and for work. <laughs> because I yes, use for, for grocery shopping. Have you ever mm -hmm. uh, had that uh, moment where you're about to go home and then you see a supermarket and you go into the supermarket and you go, Hey, I want. I need to go to the supermarket to buy things, but you don't know what's in your fridge. So mm -hmm. what yes. I do is I would, I would sometimes text my my sisters at that time, and I would tell them, "Hey guys, uh, I'm here at the supermarket. What do you need me to buy anything?" And then my sister, my sister just said she's a keep fan. My sister said, "You know what? I'm just gonna create a keep and I'll share it with you." And then mm -hmm. while I'm shopping, I can I'm looking at my Google Keep list. And it's just growing <laughs> while I'm shopping. <laughs> it's just like growing. <laughs> the list just keeps getting longer and longer while I'm shopping. So, yeah, um, Google Keep really saves you time because if you need to save anything, uh, the nice thing now about Keep is it's completely integrated inside your Google Docs and your Gmail. Yeah. So if you are, let's say I saw a quote on the wall that I like, I take a picture of that, I put it in Google Keep, and I insert that yes. in my yes, yeah, right mm -hmm. exactly, yes. mm -hmm. right, yeah. Or I take a screenshot of it, and then I just yeah. put, it, put it on mm -hmm. key, put it in key, and then yeah. like, and then if it's important enough, I pin it, you know. So it's like mm -hmm. a sauce on top. So yeah, mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. There's so, another also, app that I like. It's uh, something it? you shared, Mary, last year. Remember when mm -hmm. we did that training for Assumption? You gave me a rocket book. And even yeah. before oh, he gave me that notebook, I want one. Even before he gave me that notebook, I was already looking at Rocketbook. And then they have all of these templates um, that you can download. So what I did was I hacked the Rocketbook template. I just um, removed the, the QR code <laughs> bar. Wow. Yeah. 
and then yeah. um and then i would just put it in all of my pages documents and then now it's working really well like i've used it um i used it last year on worksheets of my students um so yeah. so i i decided that so yeah i will just um use rocket book so that all of that all of those files are scanned and are on the, are on the Google Drive or Dropbox, and that they can access it at any time if they want it for their um, portfolios. Yeah, I love Rocket Book. I like it, and I also like that if you use it with that pen, you know, uh, the friction that, pen. Yeah, yeah, the you can you can erase it and reuse the. Yes, you know, you can read. Exactly. I'm planning on buying a new rocket book, though. You know, the microwavable rocket book. Yeah, I want to try that out. So if you yeah, do buy one, to... Mary. <laughs> you know okay. already. <laughs> you know already. <laughs> so the microwavable one is you, you write on it, and then you put it in the microwave, and everything is gone. So you can reuse right. your, your rocket book. So there, it's nice. Um, another thing that I have for managing my tasks is Google Tasks because yes. a lot of people don't use yes. it. So, guys, Google Tasks is actually on your Gmail. And yes. you can it's in, yeah. add, it's like sometimes somebody emails me and that email should actually be a task. So, I will just add that email to a task and then archive the email. So, it's gone yes. from your inbox, but it's in your tasks. So you just look at your task and say, okay, what is this task all about again? I've like totally forgotten. I can <laughs> click on the task. It will pull up the email that it's related to. And I go, ah, yes. Nice. <laughs> you know, right. it's the way to kind of both clean up your mailbox as well as mm -hmm. um, uh, do, a, you know, do that whole tagging of the mail inside your tasks. I learned this, uh, I think when it comes to managing email and managing tasks, the one person that taught me was my former boss a long, long time ago when I was 25 years old. So that was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> she handles, she said, Mary, handle things one time and one time only. Don't handle things multiple times. So if you get an email, decide right away. So you get an email, you decide right away do you want to archive that do you want to delete it do you need to take action or reply can you reply now so if you can reply now reply now if you cannot reply now add it right. to your task and put a due date to it and then archive it so that you don't see it anymore handle things one time so that's what she said whatever it is it can be an envelope a mail that you got right. from, from the mail you open it Handle it. What do you do with it? Do you shred it? Do you throw it away? Do you have to pay something? Whatever it may be, handle things one time and one time only. That's what she said. And and I follow that rule throughout, and it's really, really helpful. So, yeah, that's my um, – uh, I know that it's not an app, but it's still a really good um, technique to use. We have another like uh, question here. What apps do you recommend for students to better organize their assigned work? Notebook. Hmm. Notebook. <laughs> notebook. <laughs> for notebook. Me, notebook, yes. For fifth graders, <laughs> notebook. And, you know, the view your work in Google Classroom because most of yes. them, they don't know where to look and check if they were able to do all the assigned tasks. So what I would do is always screen share and demonstrate to them. As a student, you can always click onto your name and then click the view your work and you'll see there if your work are all done and marked, graded, assigned, or mm -hmm. you need to be submit. Okay. I think for teachers who are starting this coming October, uh, put in time to really demonstrate how students can maximize their Google Classroom so that you won't keep explaining to each one of them how to check Google Classroom. <laughs> yep. Exactly, especially turning in. Yes. They, they yes. have to be taught how to turn in because so many students, they've finished their work and then they are wondering like why did they get a low grade and then why did yes. they get a grade because they didn't turn it in they finished That's the work true. and forgot to turn it in they forgot to submit yeah. so like I find uh, it weird also that they 
I don't know what they do with the Google Docs that I attach into their homework, but then it always ends up as missing. There always there's that one student or a bunch of students who heard their work always goes missing on Google Classroom, and I keep on telling them, don't touch anything anymore. <laughs> you just have to it's type it. <laughs> yeah, don't move it somewhere else. Start it for all I care, but don't move it to a different um area. Right. That's right. true. Yeah. That's right. I think so I think uh, organizing in Google Drive as well, like a technological fluency, Risa. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It all even goes back to that. Even if this generation claims they are techie, they still need technological no. <laughs> fluency. <laughs> that is that is the biggest myth of uh, yes. it all. Yes, <laughs> not true. Then, not because true Pilar is also here and uh, she's watching, I'd like to just give a quick shout out also to the Global GEG because they created the Global GEG Junior Training videos, you know, yes. that you can find on YouTube. Those are little snippets wow. of videos that you can just have the students watch and the parents as well because the parents are going to be assisting the students. So the whole Google Junior Training playlist is now available and it's really, really amazing. I, I watched uh, some of the videos already and great work to Global GEG. Kudos to you guys for compiling the Junior Training videos. So this is really going to help with technological fluency. So if you don't have the time anymore to make these tutorials for your Google Classrooms, then yeah, all you have to do is to point yeah, just point them to this link. playlist on YouTube. Link I'll, link it, yes. uh, I'll link it right now so that you can see where it is. But Mary, I'd like to suggest that if they want to link a video, make sure it's in a puzzle because some students, they would skip not watching the video. And then they ah. would come back to you asking, I didn't know that. how to do this, miss, how to do that. But if you put it in a puzzle, they'll be required to finish the whole video and answer some, you know, comprehension mm -hmm. or oh, that's nice. mm -hmm. yes. That's nice. Thank that's you. a new thing that I've learned today. Ed that's puzzle, what I something new. Because something I new. posted a demo video, but most of my students did not watch it because I did not do it in a puzzle. So they just clicked watch or turn in, but at the end they did not watch the whole video. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Um, a lot of realizations yeah, in this online distance learning. That is true. Uh, let me just uh, pull up the Google Junior Training Series and then put it in the comment section. So everybody, I'll just put it in the comment section as well so that you can you can see it. This is the Google Junior Training Series. Um, Pilar says kids need to learn to use calendar to remember their due dates. <laughs> Oh, yep, man, definitely. <laughs> that is true. They should. They should uh, really learn to remember their due dates. But again, the view your work also is a, a good, um, mm -hmm. you know, place to start. Okay. Okay. So I've got my link right here. I just got it. So this is the playlist, and I'm putting it all on on chat for the Google Junior Training Series. If you want to check it out, um, it's right there. It's a pretty good uh, resource. And this was one of the things that got announced in, uh, yes, Pilar, I know you were there. Good, great job. And also please let Stephanie uh, Rothstein know that I love uh, what she did with Glo Global GEG is her innovator project and She's done an amazing, amazing job with it. And all of you guys who have been um, GG leaders there and creating these uh, great videos, really great work. So congratulations and very helpful talaga. It's really very helpful. So I've, I've got my um, fifth question right here. And my fifth question is one sentence to always remember when things get overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Take a nap. <laughs> Take a nap. <laughs> to me, Lisa. I, I will that that. is that is my yeah. I always do that when I feel overwhelmed. I take a nap because I just 
you know, like I need to turn off. I need to I take yes. a nap. Reset. <laughs> yeah, you need cool. to reset. reset. That's true. Yeah. I am cooking chicken tikka masala in a bit. <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. So I, is your you want uh, dinner? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Wow, chef, you're uh, chef Laffy's day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. I hope it goes well. <laughs> I love chicken tikka. Um, I also do, well, you know me, I cook Indian food. So, mm -hmm. yeah, chicken tikka is definitely a really popular one. You know, the weird part about it is that <laughs> um, you know how many Indians are in the UK because their, their national food is <laughs> chicken tikka chicken masala. Chicken tikka masala, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. It's not, it's not um, even the English breakfast. It's not English yeah. breakfast. It's not even it's shepherd's chicken. pie. <laughs> no, it's ironic. Not. Yeah. <laughs> Never. A so win there, for um, Indians in the UK. <laughs> so Pilar was saying step away. Yes, take a nap. Yes, take a nap. Mm -hmm. You know, I say take a yeah. nap for people who are angry. Like when they get really agitated, I go, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let's pause. Just take a nap first. <laughs> That is true. Right. Yeah, it does help. It does help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also cry. Cry, yes. That's true, yes. I with a friend, Pilar. Cry with mm -hmm. a friend. It's always better to cry, cry with, with a friend. A friend. Or, yeah, when did, or when use the Hanash yeah. habit. Yes. Rant, yes. rant with Lisa, Riza, and Mary. <laughs> yes, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah they, they Larry, always said like I have, also also, I have a Hanash group in my school, and if it if things get overwhelming, like if they ask us to do this particular assessment without you know orienting the whole kids or the parents, and then we'd say, okay, let's go to the Hanash uh, no a uh, chat and let's call each other, and then they would we would you know gripe and share, <laughs> and then after that we're happy. Yeah, <laughs> we go to Hanash. By the way, right. Pilar Hanash is just a it's a it's a Filipino gay term for griping. <laughs> so, griping, yeah. So that's our yeah, our so. gripe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I it, mean, for me, I really like to go offline. Like, that's true. To the mm, people you trust, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the, for me, when when things get overwhelming, I just uh, go offline. I turn off yes, everything. Offline. Just turn off everything. I go offline. Um, I pick up a, I pick up a crochet hook for myself when things get overwhelmed. I do something with my hands, you know, something that does not really require so much uh, thinking, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying it's that your crochet doesn't, work, but it's you, you know, no, but you it's your meditation. Yeah. That's right. Especially if it's repetitive. Oh. Ayon. Much like. So there. Um, you don't think that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's your plan. <laughs> that's Plantita for you. Planty. 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 Planco. Planco. Yeah, so the last one that I have is share an app that you definitely recommend teachers try out. It doesn't have to be time saving or anything, just an app that you would like to recommend that teachers try out um, if they haven't already. Rocket Book. Even if you don't have the notebook, just get the, the templates from the Rocketbook website. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I will check that out after the mm -hmm. chat. Yeah. So what I did is I hacked it, removed the Rocketbook bar at the bottom, placed it on all of my documents, and every time I print out an activity or something, then I can scan it. But that was during the time when I was still meeting students face to face. But you know, it's great also when you're, if you have it, you can like scan your notes and it'll be there for it until you decide not to use it anymore. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. that. Like mm -hmm. uh, for uh, Pilar, she said both be video and Wakelet. So Ooh. I'm definitely a yes, video Wiglet. fan. I'm definitely be video. If you are making videos or video making, um, use we video. However, we video has a, a watermark which is really big, and yeah. it's kind of yeah. so. If you're not paying we video, you can get annoyed by the watermark. So I would recommend Clipchamp. Actually, I would recommend mm -hmm. Clipchamp if you don't 
have to export the video in HD format. If you're good with standard oh. definition, use ClipChamp because it does not have a watermark and it can mm -hmm. actually teach oh. your students. You can have your students like sign up for free because it's mm -hmm. free. There's a really good free version for it. And the free version would teach your students how to do storyboarding, how to actually do video editing, adding audio, adding video images, um, manipulating oh, the images nice. in video. Yeah, and it's a pretty, pretty great uh, app. So that's the name of it right. is Clip Champ. So that's C L I P and then Champ, like champion. Okay. Oh. Um, that's uh, one of the things that I'd like you to try because, you know, teachers, I know that you're now going to have to start doing video tutorials as well. And if you don't know how to do it, especially when you really don't have to use much of technology, I would encourage you to really do a video of yourself first. Try to record yourself talking. Like, don't be shy. Just put a camera in front of you and just start, um, pretend that you're in a classroom. Start with wow. that. And everything is just going to follow. And then more and more tools will just be added to your arsenal. Okay? Agreed. So, um, I've got Moat for audio feedback on Google Classroom and Docs and Slides. Yes, I really love nice. Moat as well. Yeah. Moat. And oh. Ben said, I used ClipChamp for video campaign of our students. Great. Nice one. There. Yes. So like I said earlier, if you don't need it to be high definition, you don't have to pay. So you just uh, export it to standard definition, which is 480. So... If you're good with 480 and with the bandwidth in the Philippines, 480 is good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Right? How about Riza? Riza's going to say. I know what Riza's going to say. <laughs> if you haven't tried this app. Yes. You, I know I'm just going to ask you to use Flipgrid. It's just Flip really Grid. simple. <laughs> well, if it's you're an really Apple simple. person, Clips. <laughs> clips. Yes. Apple Clips. Yeah. Yeah. Apple I love clips. Apple Clips. Um really easy to make videos plus the templates are really fun the stickers yeah too. they are kids to do to use apple clips if flipgrid is not good in their reception because some kids yeah. uh, mm -hmm. they don't have good re internet reception so they would always ask me flipgrid is not working then i mm -hmm. would just tell them just use the regular video in your ipad yeah. so and mm -hmm. the yeah. next time my my Feedback would be use clips. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because they can record it and then after that yes. upload it later clips on. And then later in the future, use it in ADV. Just yep. okay. <laughs> one of my most popular YouTube videos on my YouTube channel. I made the one minute professional learning on in on the inquiry cycle that was all made using clips. So it's re I'm really happy that I made it and clips so made it easy to make those um videos right oh i okay. will work i will i will check that i'll play yeah. around with clips yeah mm -hmm. that's cool yeah i've used mm -hmm. it as I, well yeah so uh, once again thank you again everybody for joining us this week and thank you for uh that and then for next week we're all gonna be um discussing all about um the web store extensions for next week Mm -hmm. So I really would like you to, because I have so many extensions, like I really, really have a lot of them. And I oh. thought about maybe we can take a look at uh, more extensions that we can use for um, for online learning that can really help you. For next week, uh, watch out for that. So once again, thank you for joining us this week. Thank you, and everyone. Thank you. Everybody, everybody have a happy, Thanks, everybody. Happy. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Okay. See you uh, next week for episode yes. 10. Woo, episode oh 10. Episode 10. Wow. <laughs> we now have more episodes than Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>